now look at that. The recording has just started. So Thank you. Alrighty then. Let's kick it off. Happy History Day, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to NHD Trivia Night. I'm Kathy Gorin, Executive Director of National History Day. And I'm Erica Washington, Office and Events Manager. Thank you for joining us for this first ever NHD Trivia Night. Hopefully it will be the first and there will be many more after this. Before we dive right into the contest, however, we want to say a big thanks and a big shout out to Miss Erica Washington over here, who is AKA DJ Lady E, who did a spectacular job with the student soccer. Oh Take a bow, Miss E. Take a bow. All right, then. And if you missed the sock hop, go ahead and head over to our Facebook page after tonight's trivia and see what you missed. Now, let the games begin. But oh, wait a minute. Let's go over the format first. Let's explain how this works. All right. So we're going to play four rounds of trivia with 10 questions in each round. These questions are either multiple choice or true and false. Each round will have a special theme. The first round will be the themes, the thing. Say that fast three times. The themes, the thing, the, the themes, themes, the thing, the, the, thing, the, thing, the thing. themes, the thing. Okay, all the right. first round is all about NHD annual themes. All right, round two will be communicators in history and communication inventions. So I'll bet you're gonna recognize a few of these questions and answers based on your entries for National History Day this year. And round three is, how well do you really know Dr. Bourne? That's me. Mm -hmm. that, that's me. <laughs> We're going to test you and your knowledge and how much you know about the NHD's primary sorcerers. The what? Primary sorcerers. I want a wand. Ooh. OK. Ooh. All right. <laughs> next, next time I get a wand. All right, everybody. Round four is going to be the history of National History Day. So it would be all the kinds of things of over the years that History Day has done or been involved in, et cetera, et cetera. So how is this gonna work? Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask two questions. So a slide will come up and there'll be two questions. And then a Zoom poll will pop up and that's where you'll choose your answers for those two questions. And right now, here in this office with me and with Miss E here are Elena McNaughton, our contest manager, <laughs> and Mr. Rick Stoddard, our director of communications. Go Rick, go Rick, take a bow. And our graduate fellow, Mari Is it? Yeah, and I want to just give you a little tidbit about Mari. She um, this September is going to be a brand new social studies teacher. Yay! Yay, Mari. She's going to be a History Day teacher. Look out. All right. So what we're going to do right now, Elena is going to run us through a practice. Elena, you're up. All right. You should see the practice question on your screen. So the practice questions are, is this your first year participating? Yes or no? And which category did you compete in? So you should see the answers coming in. And I'm going to end the poll now. And you should be able to see the results on your screen. There we are. Well, 40% are brand new to History Day. Well, that's pretty cool. Welcome, welcome. welcome. And uh, nice to have you all return. Those of you who have been here before. And the categories are fairly even, <clears throat> maybe paper and performance a little down this year based on the virtual nature of things, we know. Mm -hmm. Next year, we're going to be on site, I promise. <laughs> All right, Missy. All right, so we will announce the winners at the award ceremony on Saturday, June 19th, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we will contact you via email. The winner will receive and drum roll, please. An NHD merch bundle. Nice. Look at that. In NHD colors. Mm -hmm. 
If you have any questions along the way, please ask them in the Q&A box. Do not put your trivia answers in the Q&A box though, okay? Let's see. Okay, so for all of you out there participating in the virtual hunt, the button hunt, pay close attention. Here's a tip. We may or may not be sharing a button or two during this trivia game. All right, who's ready? Are we ready to play mm -hmm. NHD trivia? Yeah. Yeah. All right, people. And by, by the way, remember that along the way, we, as we go here, if you've got a comment or a question for any of us, anything History Day or what's ever on your mind, just go ahead and put it in that Q&A box and Mari will let us know as we go along here. Mm -hmm. All right, let's start. The theme's the thing. The theme's the thing. Question number one, true or false? NHD repeats the annual themes. Question number two, what was the annual theme for the first NHD national contest in 1980? Was it A, work and leisure in history? <clears throat> was it B, communication in history? Was it C, the individual in history? Or was it D, rights in history? And the poll is live. Answers are coming in. We've got a lot of answers coming in. You've got 15 Wonderful. seconds, 15 seconds to enter your answers. All right, the polls are closed. Let's see what we got. All righty, yes, you got, uh, most of you got question number one, correct. We do repeat the annual themes, that is true. And the answer for number two is C, the individual in history. Congrats, you got that right. That's if you've been around History Day for a while, or if you looked at our website and checked mm -hmm. out the themes. Mm -hmm. There you are. All right, here we go with question number three. The theme communication in history debuted in 2021. And question four, what is the 2022 NHD theme? Is it A, taking a stand in history? Is it B, frontiers in history? Is it C, science and technology in history? Or is it D, duh, debate and diplomacy in history? Successes, failures, consequences. And the poll is up. Communication and History debuted in 2021. You are correct. It is false. And question number four, the answer is D. I tried to tell you. Debate and diplomacy in history, successes, failures, and consequences. Yes, indeed. And you know, the communication and history theme, I don't know if you know this, but it debuted actually in 1993. Ooh. And we repeated it again in 2005. Wow. So there we are. Mm -hmm. Little fun facts about history today. Mm -hmm. All right, friends, here we go. Going with question number five. Which of the following themes has been repeated four times? Is it A, science and technology in history? B, triumph and tragedy in history? C, work and leisure in history? Or D, breaking barriers in history? And question six wants to know, in 1994, there was no annual theme. True or false? Mm -hmm. The poll is live. 15 seconds. The answers are coming in quickly. <coughs> All righty. Oh, okay. oh, we got a oh, question. We got a question here. Take Bring it on. After the next answers. Bring it on. The polls are closed. Let's see what we got. And it says, which of the following themes has been repeated four times? And yes, triumph and tragedy in history. Most of you got that right, indeed. 1985, 1997, 2007, and most recently in 2019. It certainly is a favorite. And then question six, 
is well, there was no annual thing. There oh, was uh, an annual thing. Of course, there was an annual thing in 1994. There, there always <laughs> is an annual thing. What was it? It was geography and history. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's the only time we ever did that one, and it wasn't the most popular. That's okay. Why do we have some questions? We do. Um, one of our viewers is asking, will quicker answers get more points, or is it just accuracy-based? Accuracy. Mm -hmm. Accuracy-based, this is not like Kahoot for those uh, out mm -hmm. there in NHD land who are used to playing Kahoot quizzes. Of course. Sorry about that. There couldn't possibly be a tie, correct? Oh, you never know. Well, you never know. We'll see what happens. All right. All righty. Keep those questions and comments coming. Absolutely. We're moving on to question number seven. Mm -hmm. Are you ready here? Let's go. All right. Which of the following themes has only been used once? Is it A, migration in history? B, the individual in history? C, revolution, reaction, reform in history? Or D, discovery and counter exchange in history? Question eight. How many NHD themes are there? No repeats. Is it A, 42? Is it B, 30? Is it C, 23? Or is it D, 15? And the poll has been launched. This one's pretty tough. This is a tough yeah. one. This could be a trick question. It could be a trick question. Just saying. And the polls are closed. We got there. Ah, uh, yep, we tricked you up, didn't we? Yep, there we see uh, most of you thought it was migration in history. Actually, the theme that was only used once is discovery and counter exchange in history. Why is that a trick question? Why is that a trick question, Dr. Gorn? Because the other time we used it, it was exploration and counter exchange mm. in history. That alliteration. Uh, trick question. Alliteration. Sorry, guys. Mm. Sorry, guys. And for question eight, the answer is C, 23. This is the total number of themes if we only count the repeated themes one time. Mm. Math. <laughs> Math. Yeah. <laughs> I, no. Yeah. We're all, we're all history people here, right? Yes. Yep. The only numbers I do are dates. Okay, moving on. Unless, Mari, you've got another comment or question from the folks out there. Uh, Jeremy says, frontiers in history would be really interesting, man, but the one we have is still great. Well, Jeremy, if you're around in 2023, it will be frontiers in history. Ooh, sneak, sneak, sneak. So, Jeremy, tell us, are you going to be around in 2023? We'll, have to. we'll All see. Right. All right, start thinking now. Last three questions in this round. Here we go. Number nine, what was the annual theme the first, first year the national contest was held at the University of Maryland? Was it A, the individual in history? B, communication in history? C, work and leisure in history? Or D, frontiers in history? And for question 10, what was the annual theme during the first virtual national contest? Was it A, technology in history, B, rights in history, C, communication in history, or D, breaking barriers in history? And the polls are open. Oh, oh here we go. Open. What do you think, everybody? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, question number one, <laughs> if you know the year that the first contest was held in the University of Maryland, you would know what and the theme was. Polls are Done. Ah, oh, that was a that was a tough one, wasn't it? Oh. Yeah. Well, guys, guess what? It was C, work and leisure in history. And the answer for number 10 is D, breaking barriers in history. Yes, another little trick that we played on you this time around with that theme with the University of Maryland. The very first national contest was held at Georgetown University with the theme the individual. The first time it was held at Maryland, work and leisure. Interesting. Got to be up on that. Yeah. What caused the move, Dr. Gorn, from Georgetown to, to UMD? Well, I'll 
I'll tell you why. Uh, there were only 500 students who participated in the national contest in 1980. It was held at Georgetown. And even then, it was too big. The contest was too big. Too many kids, too many teachers, too many parents, too many families. <laughs> For the space. Space. That's the, the correct. The more the merrier in, in History Day. Right? The more the merrier in History Day. You know, we're up to just almost 3,000 wow. each national contest now, but we had to move to a bigger venue in 1981. And that's when we held it at the University of Maryland. And we were way past 1,000 by then. That's how quickly History Day caught on. How about wow. that? Cool. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, we are <clears throat> at the end of round one. How's everybody doing? Everybody awake? <laughs> doing okay? Feeling pretty good? Miss Mari, we got any comments here? I'd to give a shout out to, to Hani from Arizona, if you could. All right, nice. Hani from Arizona. All right. Thanks for playing. So Hani said she really enjoyed our podcast and learning about um, the National Radio and Television Museum. Excellent, thank you for listening. We had fun putting that together. Hey off, Suhani. For this category. Get ready for round two here. Uh oh, uh oh. That's right, here it comes. And as a reminder, we will announce the winner at Saturday's award ceremony, three o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and you will be contacted via email. The winner will receive what are they going to get, guys? How are they won? Boom! A merch bundle. Ooh. All right. <laughs> And those of you who are jealous and don't actually win the merch bundle, you can always go to nhg.org slash shop and order one. You sure can. And again, if you have any questions, put them in the Q&A box. And Ms. Mori over here, she's going to help you out. So don't put your trivia answers in the Q&A box, only your questions. You ready for round two, Dr. Gore? Let's go. All right, then. Round two, communicators in history. Number one, who sent the first telegram? Was it Queen Victoria, Samuel Morris, Abraham Lincoln, or Eli Whitney? Question two, who made the first phone call? I think I did with Sprint. No, I'm just kidding. Was it A, Clara Barton? Was it B, Ulysses Grant? Was it C? Alexander Graham Bell, or was it D, James Buchanan? The polls are launched. Tough question. Yeah. Does Sprint exist anymore? Yes. Does it? Maybe. Well, Maybe. I think I'll merge with T-Mobile. T-Mobile Sprint. Yeah. Is that what it is now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all down to the yeah, it's umbrella. It's a monopoly thing, you know. They're oh, all oh, eating goodness. each other up. The polls are closed. All right, let's see what we got. Ooh. Samuel Morris. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was a gimme. Okay, guys, that was a gimme. It was Samuel Morse. The first telegram was sent on May 24th, 1844. And it was a, a sort of temporary experimental line that went from the US Capitol, downtown DC, all the way out to Baltimore. And the message that was sent, what hath God wrought? That, of course, if you know your Bible, is numbers 2323. And the answer to number two is C, Alexander Graham Bell. The first telephone call was made on March 10th, 1876. This call was made by Bell to his assistant, Thomas Watson. He said, hey, you wanna join me for a cheeseburger? <laughs> no, 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 that was me earlier no. today. We dinner. had cheeseburgers yeah, for dinner, had... guys. And fries. No, Bell said to Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. All right, and uh, here we go. Let's go to number three. True or false, the first text message was sent in 1992. Mm -hmm. Question four, which of the following decades falls within the golden age of radio? Is it A, 1950, B, 1930s, C, 1910s, or D, 1980s? All is live. All right. 
All right, let's see what we've got. True, the first text message was sent in 1992. That is correct, which absolutely surprised me. I didn't realize we could do that that early, but the first one was transmitted on December 3rd, 1992, when engineer Neil Papworth typed Merry Christmas on a computer and sent the first SMS message to the cell phone of Vodafone director Richard Jarvis. And the answer is B for number four, 1930s. If you listened to the second episode of our podcast, good. If you didn't, shame on you. <laughs> NHD field trip. You heard the answer to this exact question. That's right. All right. Let's move it on to question number five. Which candidates participated in the 1960 televised presidential debate? Was it A, Kennedy and Nixon? B, Eisenhower and Stevenson, C, Johnson and Goldwater, or D, Clinton and Dole. And number six is true or false. World War II is referred to as the first television war. Hmm. And the hmm. polls are launched. Here we go. These are coming in really quick. <laughs> All right, well, these are kind of on the easier side. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get a little bit more difficult as we go along. Mm -hmm. A few more seconds. Well, yes, of course, it was Kennedy and Nixon. And the answer to number six is false. The Vietnam War is referred to as the first television war. Uh, ah. yep. The okay, uh, World War II, we had newsreels. Newsreels that were played at the movies. If you went to the movie theater during World War II, you often saw a newsreel about the war just before the movie started. You did not see the cartoons, you saw newsreels. Mm. That's right. All right. We ready to move on to number seven here? Are there any questions? questions right now, but I would love to give a shout out to Ashna in Virginia. She says she's wearing the same NHD t shirt. Hi! Lindsay. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Here we go. I'm wearing one. Kind sweatshirt. We only had these two years ago in 2019. Wow. Just yeah. saying. Exclusive. Bring them back. I'm just saying. Bring them back. Just saying. We need some NHD, more NHD hoodies. That's right. All right. And socks. <laughs> All right. Question number seven. Where was the world's first commercial radio station known as KDKA? Was it A, London, England, B, Buffalo, New York? C, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or D, Tallahassee, Florida. And question number eight. When was the presidential primary debate first broadcast on the radio? Was it A, 1955? Was it B, 1939? Was it C, 1945? Or was it D, 1948? The poll is launched. Mm. Okie dokie. Let's go fast fingers. Let's do it. Go. Mm -hmm. Five more seconds. Mm -hmm. The answer is coming in hot. Nice. Polls closed. Alrighty, put it up there. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Katie K A. Now you knew that if you listened to our second podcast. Mm -hmm. I want to know, Miss Maury, if anyone out there listened to the first podcast, NHD Field Trip, what that was about. Ooh. Let's let's see. I know we did have a lot of fans of the second podcast. A lot of people really enjoyed listening to that one. So we'll see if anyone listened to the first one. All right. Okay. And the answer for number eight is D, 1948. Candidates already use radio to communicate with the public. But the 1948 Dewey Stassen Republican debate was the first presidential primary debate transmitted on the radio. I, I didn't know that. Yes, Mari's got, got her hand up here. Some of our uh, trivia experts over here want to know where can they listen to the podcasts? Ooh, great question. Well, you all you got to do is go to either our website, nhd.org slash podcast, or any podcast app, so any the iTunes podcast app, Spotify, anywhere you listen to podcasts. Mm -hmm. right. 
Just look for NHD Field Trip. That's the name of the podcast. If you yes. do, if you do uh, listen at our website, there are bonus features, including transcripts, production photos, uh, and then a couple of other fun facts to be found at nhd.org slash podcast. All righty. Okay, let's move on to question number nine. Mm -hmm. Who developed American Sign Language? Was it A, Albert Einstein, B, Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet, C, Thomas Edison, or D, Benjamin Franklin? And question 10, who pioneered the technology that would one day form the basis for today's Wi-Fi? No, no, Wi-Fi. It's not Wi-Fi? No, it's Wi-Fi. Oh, darn it, I was close. <laughs> Wi-Fi, GPS, and Bluetooth. Was it A, Gertrude Rainey, was it B, Florence Lawrence, yeah, that rhymes, or C, Hedy Lamar, or was it D, Lillian Wald? The poll is launched. Get your votes in there. A lot of people know this one. A lot of people know <laughs> ah. this one. Okay. Five more seconds, though. All right. Hey, hey uh, Dr. Born Erica, give us a wave. Give us hey. a wave. All right, the results are up. Ooh. Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet. Well, yes, of course it was. Uh, he was the first to develop American Sign Language and Gallaudet University is named for him. And question number 10, the answer is C, Hedy Lamar. Absolutely, Hedy Lamar. Back then known mostly just as an actress, but she was quite the genius when it came to computers. A lot of people didn't know that back then, but we do know now, and you know why? Because so many of you all out there have studied Hedy Lamar for your History Day topics. Pretty cool. All right. And just so, one more reminder, we'll announce the winner this Saturday. That's in two days. When Saturday, June 19th, the award ceremony. Who's excited? <laughs> can't wait. And, I can't wait. And we're also gonna email the winner. Also, remember, if you have any questions or a shout out, put them in the Q&A box, but don't put your trivia answers there. That's right. And we might point out, everyone, if you didn't watch the news today, President Biden did sign into law a new federal holiday for Juneteenth. That is June 19th. And Mari, let's see if anyone out there knows what that's about. So we'll... If you, if you do know, put your comments and your answers into the Q&A box there about Juneteenth. All right. And while we're waiting for that, reminder that contest manager Elena McNaughton is here to help you out. And oh, oh, wait a minute. We're here, here. You better look fast, you button hunters. Go, 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 go. Run, don't walk. <laughs> no, don't trip. Don't trip. There me. they are. Check them out. Those buttons. Get them. Love that Indiana button. I got to say, that Indiana button, that's the best. That's sharp. That's the kind of telephone I remember. Well, you mm -hmm. got that, that Louisiana spirit coming up. With their word cloud. Yeah, all the topics. And then Classic the, California. the mighty grizzly. Grr. Great buttons. <clears throat> all righty then. Away we go, Missy. All right, everybody. This round is... <laughs> How well do you know Dr. Gorn? Here she yes. is. That's me. That's it. All right. You think you do? Well, this round is all about Dr. Gorn, and there's only one way to find out. So get ready, get ready, and here we go. Question number one. What is Dr. Gorn's favorite color? Is it A, blue? Is it P, B, pink? Is it C, orange? Or is it D, red? Question number two. I like that teal. <laughs> teal is very nice. It's it is. A it very is. Color. It's a very nice color. You too can get a teal shirt at nhd.org <laughs> backslash shop. Okay, right. back to trivia. Question number two. Where is Dr. Gorn's mother from? Is it A, Canada? Is it B, Croatia? Is it C, Cambodia? Or is it D, the United States of America? And the poll is live. Ooh, the answers are coming in. Are they coming Ooh. in? Think they know? I think they, you think they, they know? know. I think so. Okay. I don't know. We'll see. Out. We're 
definitely got one right. Mm -hmm. got one right, huh? All righty. All get right. It. Wow. Fred, how did you guess? <laughs> That's what I want to know. All righty. Well, we've got a split there. Very interesting for number two. Yeah. So for the record, number one is red D. How did you guess? Just in case. You didn't know. And question number two is B, Croatia. Wow. You guys were split on this one. Yep. And, uh, what about Scott? What about Scott? What is yeah, what she said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, then. What does that mean, Dr. Bond? It means, yes, Croatia. That's true. Ta-da. And, and how would one say, happy history day in Croatian? One would say, vesela povijas dan. Vesela povijas dan. All right. All right. All right, moving on to question number three, which is true or false. In 2002, Dr. Bourne started working at National History Day. True or false? Question number four. What is the name of Dr. Bourne's cat? Is it A, Moose? Is it B, Puppy? Is it C, <laughs> Teddy? Or is it D, Kit? All right, the poll is launched. Oh, we've got some gimmies here. These are some real gimmies. Mm -hmm. They would know the question for the floor if they were on Instagram this week. Ah. That's right. I, I have a bear named Teddy. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. Give just clues, give just saying. Just saying. Ah. All right, here we go. All right. So the answer to question three is false. Yes, what? I'm older than that. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. And the answer to question four is D, Kit. Of course. You were watching Kids Clues, you would have known it. Love the Kids Clues. That's right. Kit is a rescue kitty. She's a, a lovely Burmese. She looks black, but she's actually a very dark chocolate brown. Mm -hmm. And she is blind in one eye. She doesn't hear very well. Actually, I think she has selective hearing. <laughs> and she walks crooked, but she is the sweetest, softest little thing mm -hmm. in my life. Yes, she is. And she shows love what the world needs more of. Oh, hi. Hey, hey, it's getting, getting heavy in here. What was the theme in 2002? The year you did not start working in that. Revolution, reaction, reform in history. Oh, Am I right? Yeah. There you go. Absolutely. Any questions for us, Maury? Any comments? We do have uh, just a couple. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Halleck and Suhani who want to shout out Mrs. Trepanier for helping them with their NHG projects and for going above and beyond to help her. We also have uh, Ellie who says that she thinks all cats have selective hearing. No, no I think uh, you're right about that too, Ellie, yeah. <laughs> and a fan of Kit says that Kit should be the new NHG mascot. Oh, oh, I think she should too. I think she'd like that very, very much. Cool. We all agree. <laughs> <laughs> Kit's history. Kids history. Kids history. Kids history. Kids history. history. No, okay, let's no. move on. Uh, All right. <laughs> Question number five. From which university did Dr. Gorn receive her PhD? Is it A, University of Maryland? Is it B, Case Western Reserve University? Is it C, Penn State University? Or is it D, Ohio State University? Question number six, is true or false? Dr. Gorn accepted the 2011 National Humanities Medal from President Barack Obama on behalf of NHD. Is it true or is it false? The polls are live. Mm. Hmm. It's tough. Well, Dr. Gorn is saying the answers are coming in quick. <laughs> uh, can't put one past the NHD. <laughs> I think some of you have done your homework, that's for sure. And here are the results. Okay, so the answer for number five is B, Case Western University. Yes, it is. The answer for number six is true. All yes, right. indeed. And uh, Dr. Gorn, what was it like <laughs> receiving the National Humanities Medal? 
ballot, of course, was one of the highlights of my time here at History Day. And um, as some of you may know by watching him on television, seeing photos of President Obama, he's a very, very, very tall man. And uh, I'm not. <laughs> and so I, I wore extra high heels so that I could be a little bit taller. And I still only came up to about his shoulder by the top of my head on my tiptoes. So, yeah. So what did, uh, did you uh, have an exchange with him at all see, in, the, in the ceremony? Mr. Stoddard wants to embarrass me right now. So <laughs> uh, might as well embarrass myself. Yes, I walked up there and all I could think was when they called my name, don't trip, don't trip, don't trip, don't trip. I got up there and he took my hand in both of his and he leaned down, of course, and said, how are you, Kathy? And I looked at him, here's my 10 seconds with the President of the United States, the most powerful man in the world. And what do I say? I'm really nervous right now. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say, guys? What it's can wrong. I say? It was still pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And then we went down to the Roosevelt Room in the White House for official pictures. And I got to have a nice. picture with President and Mrs. Obama. So here was President Obama. And here was Mrs. Obama. <laughs> and I was in between them like this. <laughs> and we have the picture on our wall to prove it. Yes, we we have it here. All right, everyone. All right. Moving on to question all right, seven. All right, all right, all right. Yet another true or false. Dr. Gorn has traveled to Antarctica. True or false? Hmm. Hmm. Question number eight. How many presidents has Dr. Gorn met? Is it A, two? Is it B, three? Is it C5 or is it D6? And the poll is live. Let's see what they know. Okie dokie. Bring it on. This is neck and neck. This is oh. neck and neck, huh? All right. One more second. All right. Oh, very close. All right. Close. The answer to number seven is true. Yes, uh, indeed. I have been on six continents. Which one have you missed? Australia. That's a, there's a question for a future. Trivia game. Trivia game. It's for a future, and I won't be going there anytime soon, at least not until they get control of their little mouse problem. Yikes. Yikes. Look that up. Oh, so, no. so Dr. Gorn, to, to put you on the spot again, you when, you when you returned from Antarctica, you taught me a lesson about the meaning of the word Antarctica. Did. I did. The difference between Arctic and Antarctic. Anyone know out there? Say it. Put it in the Q&A. <laughs> the difference, what is the difference between Arctic and Antarctic? So Mari, pay attention. Let us know. In a little while, we'll give you the answer to that. And the answer to number eight is C, five presidents. Five. Which ones? Ford, Carter, Clinton, Obama, and Bush, the 43rd, right. the second Bush. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Pretty cool. Very cool. Any comments, questions? Anyone in the- Anybody know about- Is it bears versus no bears? <gasps> smart, Absolutely smart is there. correct. Mm -hmm. Arctic means bear, Antarctic, no bear. Polar bears, penguins. We have a couple shout outs. One for Susan Glazer, Long Island Regional Coordinator. She's been a huge help. Hey, New Susan, York. you yeah. absolutely <laughs> I lifesaver the last two years for New York. Very good. And one more from Ethan Kelly, who I have to say has been lighting up this chat box with the most <laughs> hilarious insights. <laughs> been keeping this Q&A uh, controller very enter entertained. Says Mr. Miller has been an awesome help through COVID and in completing an HD project. Yay. Thank you, Mr. Yay. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Shout Miller. You. Do, do you want to share any of uh, the insights or are they um, for well, behind the scenes only? <laughs> what he, that well, I'll say one of my favorites. He said, uh, Croatia, that's a place. It sounds like a type of crab. <laughs> 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 what what uh, what's his entry number? <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, Ethan. Just kidding. And, and how do you say crab in Croatian? 
question, Dr. Gorn. Really putting her to the test. I have. <laughs> oh, oh yes, I do. Rack. R A K. Rack. It also Rack. means cancer. Oh. Rack. Oh, well. Like the like the. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. so the crab, yeah. the symbol yeah. for the, the horoscope, cancer. Okay. Yeah. Crab. Wow. <laughs> there we are. But not Marilyn Blue Crab. That's different. Mm, yeah. All right. Go All ahead. right. Let's keep it going. Last two questions in round three. Question number nine True or false? Dr. Gorn participated in NHD as a student. Mm. Is that true? Mm. Or is that false? Mm. You get you to thinking. And number 10, where did Dr. Gorn teach history? Was it A, University of Maryland? Was it B, Eleanor Roosevelt High School? Was it C, Bergwin Heights Middle School? Or was it D, Cleveland State University? These are tough. All right. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but we'll see. <laughs> The polls are closed. All right. The answer is, and I put my paper away prematurely. <laughs> number nine is false. Mm. However, I just want to be clear that the very first history day, I'm not going to tell you when it was because that's in the next set of questions. <laughs> I could have participated. Well, Dr. Gorn, if you if you would have participated in NHD. What category do you think you would have participated in? I think that I would either have written a paper or done a performance. Probably oh, a performance. Yeah. I would have thought paper. Yeah. Well, that's what I just said. No, but either a said paper or performance. Well, what would you have done? I no doubt performance because I'm a character. Well, of course you would. If anybody <laughs> saw the sock hop on Monday, of course, <laughs> performance. <laughs> Oh, all right. All right. And the answer to the last question of this round, say, oh, is a University of Maryland. Ah. Yes, indeed. What, uh, what course did you teach? Dr. I Lawrence? taught U.S. history. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. That is the end of round three. And we are moving on to round four, our final round. All righty. Here we go. Round four is called the History of National History Day. Question number one. Which of the following was not, not an original NHD category? Mm. A, exhibit, B, paper, C, documentary, or D, performance? And question number two. What was the original name for the documentary category? Was it A, media presentation? Was it B, VHS presentation? Was it C, slideshow? Or was it D, documentary? And the polls are launched. Here we go. This is a tough one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you think you kept some. Category. Yeah. Category. Five more seconds. Categories. Categories. Mm -hmm. ah. And the polls are closed. Mm. Here are our results. Yep. Those of you who chose C, documentary, yep, that was not an original NHD category. Huh. Mm. Mm. That is true. Interesting. And the answer for number two is A, media presentation. Mm. That is it. How did that, how did that look, Dr. Gorn, the, the media presentation category? Well, in those are early days. Before they beca it became the documentary category, it usually was a slide projector and a tape recorder. And heaven forbid the slide projector jammed in the mm. middle of your presentation. Wow. Mm. Yeah, it's painful. Really painful tested when that students' happens. improv skills, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and nerves. Oh, man. And wow. really tested the parents' nerves, actually. All right. OK, then. Here we are. Number three. Which of these is the newest NHD category? Is it A, documentary, B, website, C, exhibit, D, performance? And question four, where are the NHD headquarters located today? Is it A, College Park, Maryland? Is it B, Washington, DC? My old town. Is it C, Harrisburg, PA? Or is it D, 
Cleveland, Ohio. And we are live. All right. Miss oh. Mari, you got anything for yeah. us? Well, in response to that question we asked, one of our viewers wants to know, Dr. Mark, why didn't you participate in National History Day? Why didn't I? Mm -hmm. I didn't know about it, actually. I could have, but my teachers did not participate. So therefore, the students didn't participate. Mm -hmm. And speaking of good teachers, good National History Day teachers, we got a shout out to Amy Bradshire of Oak Tree Academy. She is amazing. Yeah. And to Mr. Howard from SSMS. All right. right. Yes. Let's hear it for all the teachers. Let's hear it for all the teachers. You all are amazing, Absolutely. especially this last year. Absolutely. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. All right, let's get the answers in here. And website. Well, yeah, that was a <laughs> gimme, wasn't it? And the answer to number four is a College Park, Maryland. Okie dokie. We've got another one. Mm -hmm. Question number five. In which year was NHD created? Was it A, 1999, B, 1974, C, 2001, or D, 2021? And question number six. True or false? Dr. Kathy Gorn invented National History Day. And the photo on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, people, people know these <laughs> Do they know the answer to these? They should if they were listening. Yeah. yeah. If you were listening. And the polls are closed. Oh, wow. oh look at that. 1974. Almost completely. Everyone got that completely. Yeah. 1974. That is correct. In Cleveland, Ohio, 100 and no, I'm not going to say how many students, because that's another question coming up. I just <laughs> gave it away, didn't I? I just gave it away. It's getting hot in here. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. And the answer to question six is false. It was Dr. David Van Tassel. Indeed it was. Dr. Gordon, tell us a little about Dr. Van Tassel. Dr. Van Tassel was uh, the chairman of the history department at Case Western Reserve University. And he came up with this incredible idea called History Day. He was also my dissertation advisor for my doctorate. It was just all in the family. What's your uh, dissertation on? My dissertation was on a um, nonprofit organization, education organization that tried to reform teaching in the schools. Hmm. hmm. Sounds familiar. Yeah, sounds <laughs> sound like something we know. Yeah. Hmm. But this was in the 1960s, so it was before history. Day. All right. Are we uh, ready for the next one? Number seven. Here mm -hmm. we go. Who of the following celebrities is an NHD alum? Is it A, Matthew McConaughey, B, Guy Fieri, C, Beyonce, or D, Oprah? And question eight. How many national contest staff participated in NHD as a student? Is it A, one? Is it B, 10? Is it C, four? Or is it D, five? Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> While we wait for those answers, our viewers want to know, when was the website category founded? It was founded in uh, the early 2000s. And the polls are closed. <clears throat> All right, it's Guy Fieri. Yep, Guy Fieri was a History Day participant. And guess what he did his project on? It was the history and evolution of the soft pretzel and the pretzel cart. Uh, I was twisted up about that. Brought him to Nationals from California. Yepper. And the answer to number eight is C. There were four. It was Lynn O'Hara, Elaine Kuntz, Elaine McNaughton, and Mari Izzard. All right. Yep. Okay, here we go. Number nine, almost over. How many students competed at the first History Day contest? Was it A, 10? Was it B, 101? 
Was it C, 199, or was it D, 127? And question 10, last question of the night. I can't believe it. I can't believe time it's almost over. ticking. How many people work full-time in the national contest office? Is it A, 20, B, 18, C, 9, or D, 13? All right, final poll. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, final poll. Get them in. What do you got there, Mari? A lot of sweet shout outs that I'll share with you after the last question. Okay. Wow, it's a tough one. People are split on uh, We're split on this one, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, here are your results. Okay. Oh. Yes, it was D, 127 students in the very, very first history day in 1974. And the answer to number 10 is C. We have nine, only nine. That's it. Full time staff here. That's it. We do it with mirrors. <laughs> All right. Well, that does it, people. That does it for our <laughs> Thanks for playing. Missy. All right. Remember again. We will announce the winner this Saturday at the award ceremony, three o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and you will get an email. And don't forget, don't get excited. Woo! Don't get excited. There is an awesome NHD merch bundle waiting for you if you're the winner. And if you're not, you can still go to nhd.org backslash shop. And guess what is on sale now? Run, don't walk, tell your parents, the 2022 theme book. Get your orders in now. Hurry up and get them in before everyone else. NHD.org backslash shop. T-shirts, socks, masks, 2022 theme books. We're going crazy over here. March everybody. March for everybody. It's okay now. It's okay. Orders. It's all right. My goodness gracious. Mari, help us out here, okay? <laughs> All right. We want to shout out Mrs. Sterrett at Fulbright Junior High School, who's been a great help. Isabel Valencia for inspiring Suhani to give her best on her NHD projects. Amy Bradfield, Michigan coordinator. OLA history teacher, Mr. Devereaux, with four students at National. All right. Gretchen Doyle from Edison Middle School. Mrs. Lowe and Mr. Davis from Lake Mountain Middle School. We have Neelish Gupta, who says he saw the 1974 National History Day at Case Western. Get wow. out of oh, here! Or, or you That's a primary from, source. That's a primary source. Or you may be from Cleveland, so he's got connections. And lastly, from Dr. Lori, a <laughs> shout out from Kit. Oh, shout out from Kit. Oh, sir, All right. Oh, sir, All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, if you're not already, be sure to follow us on all social media handles for National History Day, okay? And keep an eye out for those virtual button hunt buttons. It's not too late to find them all. Mm -mm. And students, be sure to check out tomorrow's program, Historical Argumentation for Students at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. More info can be found at nhd.org backslash virtual 2021 programs that's all run together nothing capitalized nhd.org <laughs> slash virtual 2021 so 2021 programs with an s all right and on behalf of miss erica washington yeah. elena mcnaughton and of course, Mari is it. Thanks so much for playing. I hope you had fun. We certainly did. And uh, we'll see you on Saturday, won't we? Good Yay. luck. Good luck, right. everybody. See y'all. They're saying it was fun. Was it fun? Yeah, they're saying it was fun.